Now, does the name Peter Weir mean anything to you? It didn't to me, but how about the year of living dangerously? Witness, Dead Poets Society, Green Card, or The Truman Show? Well, they're all movies directed by the somewhat reclusive Australian filmmaker. Kansas City author and KU film studies teacher John Tibbetts just released a book of interviews with Peter Weir, some conducted during a trip down under that he took in 2012. John stopped by to talk movies and this particular movie maker with Randy Mason. We just heard some of the names of Peter Weir's movies, but I'm guessing a lot of folks still, if they're trying to crystallize in their mind who this guy is, don't, uh, don't have a great picture of him. John, is, is there some way you would categorize the films of Peter Weir to help people out? Well, the first category is there's too few of them. He takes way too much time in between movies. Very, very picky. So you could almost forget about the guy from one film to the next. I mean, Master and Commander with Russell Crowe, a seafaring yarn. There was another four, five, six years before his last film, way back, and that was about four years ago. So you have to go backwards a little bit. But the titles they do strike a memory. You know, Dead Poet Society and The Truman Show and The Year of Living Dangerously, a number of Mel Gibson films mm -hmm. like that, and uh, Mosquito Coast and... Harrison Ford Pictures, Witness. So he's been all over the map in Australia and America. But darn it, make more movies. That's the, uh, the rallying cry that we Peter Weir fans have been raising for years. Was that what you were trying to take to him as you yeah. headed off down there? One of the first things we did was uh, sit down and talk about a script in progress, which is a bit of a coup that's in the book. He talked very freely about finishing a script and he said, well, you've, you know, you have to take a book and turn it upside down and, and let all the words fall out of it before you can begin <laughs> to adapt it. And I think, how many authors might not be too happy to hear that? But uh, the project never has gotten made. Hmm. We're waiting. Yeah. Well, he also told a scriptwriter, I'm going to eat your script. It's going to be part of my blood. That's yeah, quite a visceral quote. This is a decidedly destructive character when you get right down to it. Making a movie for him really is a matter of turning everything inside out probably his crew, probably himself, and probably the viewers, because we come away from a lot of the films sometimes not quite sure what we've seen. Maybe a mystery has been unresolved. Maybe there's been a hallucinatory quality to some of it, so we're not sure if we can trust what we've just seen. But we're dazzled. Well, he's not known for being the most outgoing of... of uh, human beings, at least in relation to when yeah. we see you know, stuff about movie news. Peter Weir does not usually no. rise to the top. I would think you'd have been apprehensive even going down there to find him in the first place. He's very wary, very guarded. You don't see him unless he knows in advance you're going to see him. But I had met him in 1993. We did an interview on a film called Fearless. We hit it off. It worked out as a number of correspondences ever yeah. since. I did a painting of him that he signed. He liked that. And so when the time came for a sabbatical from the University of Kansas, hey, Pete, let's get together. You promised maybe we could meet again sometime. He took me up on it, invited me out, and I'll tell you, he proved to be anything but reclusive, anything but guarded, anything but forbidding, which, as you say, has <laughs> been his reputation. I was delighted to find him the most... Um, accommodating of hosts the first day I was there he took me on a long car ride all around mm -hmm. Sydney former haunts I learned a lot about Australian history especially in Sydney you know Botany Bay and all that that's where Australia got started mm -hmm. originally as a penal colony so you find out real fast to study the work and person of a guy like Peter Weir is to really immerse yourself in fairly recent Australian history mm -hmm as it has emerged over the last 200 years. And you saw Hanging Rock? Oh, you bet. I experienced Hanging Rock. You don't just see it, you experience it. You climb up there onto those rocky slopes and uh, you realize how much of an innate mystery there really is in that bizarre volcanic rock formation. The site, of course, of maybe his still most famous film, Picnic at Hanging Rock, yeah. another yeah. unresolved mystery. 
one you know, enigmatic as all get out. I yeah. mean, there, there's probably a few films I can think of that leave probably audiences more divided. Some who yeah. just, well, why did I watch that? And others who are really drawn into his, his detail and his sense of sort of foreboding, but not oh, exactly yeah. sure but it, what's where it's going. But a beautiful foreboding. Yeah. This is one of the most sumptuously, gorgeously photographed movies yeah. ever made by the great Russell Boyd, who I also met. So rarely has mystery and terror been so beautifully packaged, and that's another weird trademark, you know. And the mystery remains, and Hanging Rock has become kind of a cottage industry now. There's, right. there's a, a place there where you can go, there's a tourist area, and um, you can talk to people, there's video displays and all of this. Right. Um, nobody can quite figure out if what happened at Hanging Rock really happened. Another mystery. But in Peter Weir's world, that's as it should be. Well, there's an interview here with him, which you edited these. these they're not all interviews that Correct. you did. Yeah. While I was in Australia, I took advantage of meeting a number of associates, colleagues, buddies hmm. of his, and I got interviews and transcripts with them that had never been published hmm. before. And it strikes me... If you're going to do a book about an Australian filmmaker, maybe you should interview Australian people. Any book that's been out so far about him has not been able to make that kind of boast. And also interviews with his cinematographer, Russell Boyd. Ask me if I'm starstruck. I think so. A, an artist like Russell Boyd, to see what he does and to hear him talk about his craft, to take you into the workshop, share with you what he does, and how those marvelous effects on Hanging Rock, and in Year of Living Dangerously, and in Master and Commander, how they did it. You know, the cinematographers, they know where the bodies are buried. And he and Weir have worked a long time together. And in the Hollywood system of today, <laughs> Peter Weir is not probably one of those go-to guys. <laughs> Probably by choice, he has chosen to remain in Australia after many sojourns in America. Uh, unlike some of his colleagues, also from that new wave of Australian cinema, like Bruce Beresford and Fred Skepsi and Gillian Anderson, or Gillian Armstrong, these are people who kind of took up a partial residence in the States for good. Not Peter. He has his own farm near Sydney. He remains there. He's happy as a clam. Uh, doesn't make much movies anymore. No, we'll see. But he's got a KU ball cap. Oh, isn't that fun? <laughs> he let me videotape a greeting to the KU students wearing the KU hat. And he has that hat still. And you know, I'll bet he wears that every day. <laughs> no doubt. It's a big hit while they're putting the shrimp on the barbie. Yeah, but I mean, he's an honorary Jayhawk, and the Jayhawk is such a bizarre creature in the first place. I think it's highly appropriate. <laughs> well, you mentioned other books. Did you say 22? Yeah. Um, one coming out in just a few weeks about the great Douglas Fairbanks Sr. And I've also done books on music and on painting and on novels and on fantasy and science fiction. Yeah. All of them having film as a kind of core. Isn't that the nice thing about movies? They pinwheel you off into all of the other different art forms. And so you can kind of play hooky as you gamble about all of them. These are the kinds of things I like to do in my KU classes as well. Well, I'm not going to say what year, but I took one of those uh, film <laughs> classes and <laughs> picked up quite a few useful things. Uh, are the students of today still, you know, grabbing onto it like I think we did back in whatever decade well, that was I took it? They're a lot more well-behaved than back in the day, <laughs> if you'll recall. Um, we both kind of come out of a Vietnam-era sensibility, and uh, students right now are pretty darn quiet. Should I be afraid, very afraid? No, the campus is pretty well behaved. There's lots of motivation. Maybe more interest in becoming filmmakers mm. than film scholars, archivists, teachers, and critics. But hey, turn the crank of the camera and maybe riches will lie and come your way. So, well, This book uh, out from the uh, University Press of Mississippi. Right. Conversations mm -hmm. with Filmmakers series. Right, and a number of them now on Australian filmmakers, mm. although this is the first such book about maybe Australia's preeminent filmmaker, Peter Weir. So I'm just so proud to have had that experience. And uh, the KU sabbatical made it all possible. So I'm very grateful about that, too. Yeah. We're going to have to let you go here. But okay. uh, Peter Weir interviews edited by John C. Tibbs. And he's an honorary Jayhawk. Wearing the, the colors proudly. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming down and joining us thanks, on Randy. the local show. Good Appreciate to have you. It.